every time I leave for Tokyo, it's either hot and wet or it's cold and wet. Winter really set in in Sydney yesterday and when I get to Tokyo at five o'clock in the morning, it's gonna be 30 odd degrees. So in the meantime, I'm enjoying a tipple by the tarmac, as you do. This is the weirdest thing ever. I just saw a sign outside. This is apparently a silent terminal. It's just silent. Until only three minutes ago, since I'd been here, there had been not one single announcement. It was just deadly silence. It's really weird being in an airport where there are no announcements. You hear that shit at the airport all the time, but here, tonight, nothing. It's so weird. I've done this thing that I hate watching other people do, where they get up really soon, like ages before the gate opens, and stand in a line. And now I'm doing it because I wanted to get in first. Let's see if it works. Maybe it's because I've had two double scotches and I'm feeling quite... I don't know what the word is, but I would not normally do this because I find it annoying and I think people who do this are really stupid, so... <laughs> What does that say about me? So the strategy paid off, but in an unexpected way. I went to the wrong place first, then I went to another place which I thought was the wrong place, but it turned out all the stupid people were still lined up in the wrong spot. I'm pretty much one, two, three, four, five, six, about tenth in line to get on the plane. Nice win. This is where all the privileged people sit. I'm going to be testing testing out one of those when I come back. I need to actually go to the other side or go through one of the galleys. Excuse me. There we go, through the galley. That's what the galley's for, right? Okie dokie. 71J, here we are. Here I am back in Tokyo for trip number two of 2019. It's the first week of June and right now it's 31 degrees. What a difference 11 weeks to make. It was seven degrees the last time I was standing here talking about drinking coffee in a bottle and drinking my favorite energy drink. However, this location isn't the only similarity. I'm heading across to Nihonbashi and I hope to take in such delights as the Kite Museum, the Bank of Tokyo Currency Museum, and probably the one I'm looking forward to the most, the Museum of Dry Cleaning and Laundry. Can't wait to see that one. One of the real joys and challenges at the same time of finding anything in Tokyo is trying to understand where you are relative to anywhere else. Particularly if you're trying to find somewhere on a corner. We've got this little tiny street here. A sort of little tiny street there. It's only a kind of a half street. This one I think only goes one way. That, I'm not really sure. Am I looking for that building or that building? Probably not that building. Or am I looking for that corner down there? It's almost impossible to know. Much to my surprise, this one is labeled with exactly the address showing in Google. But what does that actually mean? If you don't understand how Japanese addresses work, you're gonna be hard pressed to ever work out where anything is. Addresses are all split into wards, areas, blocks, and buildings. So this one, if I'm reading it right, is number 12 to 10 of one chome, one chome, I think, indicating the block. Nihonbashi is where we are, and Chuoku is kind of a council area. These things don't appear everywhere. These things are not on every building, they're not on every corner, and as a general rule, streets don't have names clearly labeled on them. So unless you can follow Google Maps, and without a really strong 4G connection, finding anywhere in Tokyo can be rather challenging. However, it just so happens that the place we're looking for is right at the top of that building. So I was kind of walking around it the whole time. But speaking of pretty much walking past it and around it and near it, that really should have been the giveaway. It actually says Kite Museum. And then it says here, Kite Museum. Why I had so much trouble finding that, I will never, ever know.
best old school lift I've been in for such a long time. The 1987 is on one of those numbers up there, but something tells me it's a little bit older than that. That was the Kite Museum done in Dusted. Well, that was the Bank of Tokyo Currency Museum. There was no photography inside at all, probably due to the nature of being the central bank of Japan or whatever. It sounds dry and a bit dull and a bit geeky, but it was actually quite fascinating. Who doesn't want to walk through a museum that covers 1,400 years worth of currency? To make up for the lack of footage, I decided at the museum shop, I decided that because of the nature of the place, I was not only going to have visited a bizarre museum, but I was going to get the most bizarre keepsakes from said bizarre museum. This, not that you can see it, is a packet of thousand yen note cookies. And then in here, what else could you possibly need after visiting a currency museum, but a bunch of currency museum coasters. It's a currency museum coaster kit, because who doesn't need a whole bunch of cork coasters dedicated to a Japanese currency museum? So that's the currency museum. Done and dusted. This is the Okamura Chair Museum. They only take museum tours by appointment made on the morning of the day before the desired tour. Okamura accomplished in creating the first automatic transmission front wheel drive car Mikasa. That is Mikasa. This is one of the first companies to create swivel office chairs. I really wanted to come and see a chair museum, but sadly, it's not to be. visited shrines in all of Japan I think. I was going to go and do my latest Tombini stash video inside but it's no eating inside. Is it? Today we've got all sorts of treats from 7-Eleven. This is a cream puff custard and whipped cream. Melon pan, maple and margarine pancakes. Egg and shrimp cutlet sandwich. Here's the best one. Blueberry and cream cheese sandwich. And all of that washed down by his diabetes in a bag for you. Yet again. Japan cola. Big. It seems to be a local variant of Pepsi. Yeah, not the same as normal Pepsi. Let's start with the blueberry and cream cheese. This is so exciting. Oh my God. The crows are here. I miss the crows when I'm not in Tokyo. They don't sound like that anywhere else. Mm. Literally just blueberries and cream cheese on this typically delicious and exceedingly well cut bread. I want to know how they get the edge in. So perfect. Mm, mm, mm. Delicious. That was kind of like starting with dessert. Mouthful of this delicious stuff. Not sure if it is delicious actually. The egg and shrimp cutlet. Oh, how bizarre. It's an egg sandwich and a shrimp cutlet. How did I not notice that from looking at the front of the packet? Mm-hmm, okay. Well, it's a nice egg sandwich, but it's just an egg sandwich. Let's try this. God, look at the size of it. Mm. Mmm, mmm, that is delicious. Look how thick it is, oh my god. That is so good. Yeah, super good. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It's got like a katsu type sauce. It's delicious. Mmm. There's mossies here. Ew. I keep forgetting it's summer in a muggy environment. How can I forget? It's 30 degrees, sticky, and there are mossies. And it's June, which means it's summer. And I just got here, and I knew I was coming, so... Go figure how I didn't know that it was summer. That was good. That was definitely worthwhile. Chunky, meaty, very flavoursome, delicious. This is the cream puff brackets custard and whipped cream. Gee, they're good at this. They put the little arrows in place so you know exactly where to start tearing and when you tear, it just comes off straight away every time. Oh, oh it's super soft. Look at that. Oh, it's like it's full of air. Mm -hmm. Now, half the custard is down there. It's a bit disrespectful at a shrine. It looks like a giant bird ship. I'd really rather it be in my mouth, but I'm not going down to get it. Mm. Tiny, soft. That's a real shame about all that custard down there. I was really going to enjoy that. Well, <clears throat> next, the maple and margarine 
pancakes. Maple and margarine. Interesting. There are two maple and margarine pancakes. They look like that. When you break them open, mm, they have all that lovely sweet maple right through the center. Mm, there's the margarine in the middle. Mm, healthy. They are super delicious. However bad they might be for you, they're super delicious. I'm getting quite full. I really didn't need all this food, but whatever. When in Rome, well not when in Rome, but when I'm here. This is what I do. I walk and I eat. And I go to strange museums. I'm having my melon pan now. I don't even know what the deal with melon pan is. Melon pan translates as melon bread, but I actually think it's just cake with truckloads of sugar on it. It's crunchy on the top, sort of. It does look more like bread than cake. Certainly looks like plain bread on the bottom. Mm. It's odd. I love it, but I can never quite understand what it is. It's almost like on the top it's a cake, Oops. on the bottom it's sort of a cake, and in the middle it's kind of somewhere between cake and bread. Weird. Always weird. It's so undefined. It's like it's not one or the other. Oh my god, there's a giant wasp up there. Look at the size of it. It's like a small bird. Oh my god. I have to go. I can't be in here with that. Over and out. Thank you.